we are joined by Christopher Bell, driver of the number 20 Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. If you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. We'll start over here on the left and then we'll go to the right. Rock Sports Network and Race Pro Weekly. Last year, you finished fourth here. Your results here in the Cup, back, cup car at Pocono have been up and down. When you look at last year coming on in, what do you look at uh, to try and help you out with the car? Yeah, Pocono is uh, you know one of the tracks that the notes from last year should correlate pretty well because it's uh, you know the second time here with the same package. So um, that's always rewarding. The Toyota cars got a uh, you know a slight body change over the off season, so we'll have to just compare notes to what we did at the other intermediates. Um, but the intermediates have been good for us, so it's definitely a track that I think we can um, perform well at. And uh, yeah, it's always one that I look forward to coming to. Nathan saw him with a podium finish. Christopher, I know how much emphasis you had on Monday at Loud, and obviously that race didn't go to plan for you guys. So how do you view? Um, you know, the, the fight for the regular season championship now after after what happened there? Uh, it's, you know, definitely getting further out of sight, that's for sure. Um, but now it's just a matter of uh, getting all we can and, and whether that's second, third, um, whatever the case may be. So, you know, we've had a couple of really, really, not a couple, we've had several really poor finishes in a row here. So it'd be nice to, um, you know, get to the checkered flag without without an incident. So. Yeah, I mean, I think our performance is certainly capable of competing for it, but the way the last couple of weeks have gone, I've, I've, I don't know if that's realistic anymore. We'll go to Bob. Uh, Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. I had two. The first, on the accident there late in the race last week, was that just you pushing too hard, or was there something else? Yeah, just trying to uh, get too much in, in a, you know, a mental mistake that cost me a bunch of points. And... Uh, the test at New Hampshire being moved to uh, to Richmond uh, is how do, is doing it at Richmond any different? Or would you expect to get any different information than doing it in New Hampshire? Um, that's a good question. And you know, me personally, I, I probably don't care. Uh, but I know a lot of guys pushed against Richmond. Richmond was one of the first tracks that NASCAR brought up. And uh, in our meeting, a lot of guys said that Richmond probably isn't the place to do it just because tire wear is so big. And, you know, there, there's a pretty big difference between good cars on long runs and, and not good cars on uh, long runs. So they were worried that the cars would get a little bit more separated at Richmond than they would at a place with low tire uh, degradation like Loudoun. Uh, so it is, you know, interesting that Richmond was first on the list and the drivers kind of deterred against it. And, and now that's where we're going. We'll head to Zach in the back. Zach Sterniello, NASCAR.com. Christopher, talking about just a rough stretch of finishes, at least. The, like you said, the performance has been there. You had a top five here a year ago. You had a test here um, as well last year. What Does that give you any more confidence, or does it put any more emphasis on just coming away with a solid finish or a finish where that you feel like the performance justifies uh, on Sunday? Does it make it more... Uh, you know, does it put a bigger target on that this weekend? Yeah, I hear you. Um, I would say yes, but looking at the last couple of races, Loudon is probably one of my best tracks, and we didn't get a good finish there. So uh, I, I, certainly I think every racetrack that we go to, um, we're capable of running well, and, and generally we have been running running well in the race and then just not finishing well. So, you know, Pocono at least is a place that, that gets – typically a little bit more spread out. Um, restarts are always hectic here, but uh, if, if we can just, or we, I say we, you know, the last couple of weeks have been on me, not we, it's been on me. And if I can just, uh, you know, execute restarts and, and, and get in position uh, to, you know, have a solid finish where I don't have to overdrive the car, or uh, I, I think we'll be all right. You know, I've just uh, done a really bad job behind the wheel the last couple of weeks at the end of the races on, uh, on closing them out. We'll go to Chris Knight, and then we'll go to Jeff Gluck. Chris Knight, catchfence.com. I got two for you. Um, with, even though the regular season championship may be a tall task for you guys, how do you feel about the playoffs lurking? Do you feel like you guys are in a good position? Is there more more to learn, or do you feel like that these are those are 10 races that you guys can feel like you can execute? Um, you know, certainly the playoff schedule is really good for us. I, I think all the tracks, minus Talladega, uh, and I think every or a lot of the drivers would be scared of Talladega too, but 
all the tracks are really good for us, you know, and, and our performance has been extremely well. The, the cars have been really fast, uh, but execution has really lacked, and that's something that scares me going into the playoffs. So we've got, you know, a month and a half here, six races or so to get it cleaned up. Uh, but, you know, if the playoffs were starting tomorrow, I would, I would be worried about it. And does running the Truck Series race tomorrow for Shiki Hattori and Hattori Racing Enterprises pay any benefit to towards Sunday? Um, you know, Pocono is a unique track and one that we only go to once a year and uh, not. So I would say that it is going to be a little bit beneficial. Um, you know, the cars and trucks now are so entirely different that there's not a bunch you can take back and forth. But definitely getting track time is, is not going to be a hindrance for sure. We'll go to Jeff in the front. Um, SVG is coming back for Indy Road Course. What what are the challenges that he's going to face there that he didn't face at the street course? Um, I mean, I would say just the the fact that we have all been there. We as in the Cup Group has been there for a number of years now. So you know, lap one of the racetrack, we're going to know roughly where our brake markers are, what the grip level is going to be at you know the the different turns. Um, so he's going to have to play catch up a little bit on the track knowledge. And I'm sure he's going to have a bunch of simulator time that'll prepare him for, you know, the visuals of it. But, uh, you know, I, I would expect by the end of the weekend them or him to not really have a, a disadvantage. But, you know, the start of practice, I would think um, it, it, he's going to have to learn the track a little bit more than the, the regulars will. We'll go in the middle. Hi, Adam Tropper, Motorsports Today. Uh, so as cup drivers, you only get limited uh, truck starts every year. Uh, is there any particular reason why uh, Pocono Raceway ended up on uh, your truck schedule? Um, honestly, none from my standpoint. You know, uh, Matt Lucas at HRE contacted me earlier on in the season about doing a couple starts, and I said, yeah, you know, if it, if it works out and you guys are – uh, able to do it, I would. And, and North Wilkesboro was one that they really wanted to do. Uh, and it was a good one for me, too, because nobody had any track time there. And then uh, after North Wilkesboro, you know, he, he mentioned Pocono. So um, I would say it was more on the team than me. And also you uh, hinted on uh, the differences between the truck and the next-gen cars in the Cup Series. Uh, you said the track time would uh, trump that. Uh, is there any correlation that you would be able to take away from the truck race to be able to help you besides track time? Um, you know, one thing that's going to be interesting is the track compound or the track treatment that has not been put on this year. But as we saw from last weekend at Loudoun, uh, it, it is it's still there from years and years past. So uh, it'll be interesting and definitely an advantage to see if that stuff comes in in the truck race. Uh, you know, how grippy it is, how wide it is, um, and and what that looks like. So I would say that you know, truck to cup car, nothing in the car is going to translate, but uh, track time, track conditions, that stuff will. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. Thanks. Any final questions? We'll go in the back and we'll come back up to Chris. Kyle Magda, Rowdy Magalite Racing Media. Can you talk a little bit about how your truck was uh, with the Tory at North Wilkesboro? And, um, you know, what was it like getting back in the truck? And then, um, and, and you also have a win here. You won here in 2017 with Kyle Busch Motorsports. Yeah, certainly getting back in a truck was it was really enjoyable at a very historic track and uh it you know i thought that it was a decent run you know we, we qualified i think somewhere in the back half of the top 10 um practice around the same place so it seemed like that fifth to tenth range was kind of where we stacked up at north wilkesboro uh and you know hopefully hopefully are a little bit more competitive than that this week and uh, it's a place that, like you said, I have won before, but Kyle Busch Motorsports has had a hand on for a long time now. So um, we're going to have to be we're gonna have to be proper if we want to win this weekend. That's for sure. Any final questions? We'll go on the front. Chris Shane Hector, Underground Sports. Um, what is it that you need to do to be successful here um, here at Pocono? Considering it's been about five, it was about six years now since you last won here. Um, you know, Pocono is always the same challenges. No matter if you're here in a truck, Xfinity car, Gen Six Cup car, or a Next Gen Cup car, uh, the tunnel turn is really tough. And you know, just the differences between turn one being really banked, turn three being really flat, and then both of them leading to really long straightaways. So uh, it's just a big compromise of trying to get your car to uh, 
do what it needs to do to in order for the driver to be comfortable. And, and last year, the, the JGR Camrys were really strong. Um, I, you know, I kind of found myself on the, the back half of the, the team with the 11 and 18 running really well, and then I was a little bit behind them. Uh, but, you know, I think that it, it your car's got to be very stable and comfortable at the speeds that you have here at Pocono. Um, but it also has to turn really well because if you're tight, you're not going to make any speed at all off the corners. So um, it's a it's a tough track that we generally see the guys who you know succeed here are they typically do well year after year. And uh, hopefully, I can become one of those guys at some point. We'll take one final question in the middle. Hey, Christopher, Eddie Kalegi, Motorsports Today. Uh, you were talking about how different the three turns are here at Pocono, and there's really no track like it on the circuit. Your last road course race, Chicago Street Course, you had a lot of speed. Do you kind of view Pocono sort of more like a road course or an oval from your perspective? Um, you know, it has, I mean, definitely the three corners being unique is unlike any other oval that we have. But with the speeds being up, everyone classifies it as an intermediate. So, you know, I think if you look at setup stuff, you're looking more towards the mile and a halves or a place like Michigan, uh, Indianapolis Oval, which we haven't been yet in the next gen car. But, you know, those are the kind of tracks that relate more to Pocono than, uh, you know, any road course, just because the speeds are down. All right. Thanks for joining us, Christopher, and good luck this weekend.